Hi, welcome to the uh, second one of our lectures on uh, micro lectures uh, from chapter one. Uh, we'll be looking at two terms here, uh, the interplay and relationship, and they're actually closely related terms, ethnocentrism and chronocentrism. Um, ethnocentrism, uh, that idea really first developed uh, as a, as a formal concept in the late 1800s. A uh, individual named Ludwig Gumplowitz, uh, I believe he was Polish, in the late 1800s began to use the term. It was first applied in America, uh, at least uh, in our first uh, literature records of it, uh, in the uh, 1906. But it is simply defined as when you think that normal is what is normal for you. Um, you think normal is and right is what is normal right now um, uh, and what you think of it is. So it ignores what other people define as what is right or normal, other cultures, other countries, and the idea that um, what is normal or right in one country might be a crime in another. So that's ethnocentrism. Now, chronocentrism is kind of a subcategory of that. That's really the idea that the time you're living in right now is what is normal. It defines what's normal. And we first saw this used by a sociologist in the 1970s, a man named Jim Fowles, Fowles. although the idea clearly existed before it, because if you think about it, ethnocentrism would include chronocentrism in many ways. Um, very often, though, a chronocentrism begins to elevate your time. You, you tend to think your time is the most important time to be alive, that the most dynamic, the most vital things are happening right now, and it really defines many things for you. Um, both of those are, are egotistical ideas. They center on the ego. So um, one of the examples I'm going to use in a minute is of this is Samuel Cartwright and his discovery of a new mental illness. And you'll see there a, 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 a thing of it. But let's let's before we do that, let's talk a little bit about an old historical example, the sun and the earth. As you probably remember from your early science class, um, one of the things that we had to discover uh, as a, a people was what is our place in the universe? Uh, does the Earth go around the Sun, or does the Sun go around the Earth? Now, if you think about it, if you think you're special, if you think you, your your planet, or your people, or your race is what the central thing is, then everything should go around you. Um, that's an Earth-centric idea, uh, called a geocentric idea. The alternative would be that the Earth goes around the Sun. That's a heliocentric. Helios is the Greek word for Sun. And only gradually did we move from the kind of idea that the Earth was the center of the world to the, of the universe to the Sun was. So they, the two examples there, uh, two views of the universe, the Ptolemaic view or the, the uh, geocentric view, you can see where the Earth there is the center. And then the Copernican view is the idea that the Earth is not the center of the universe, uh, not even the center of the solar system, but that the sun is stationary, or relatively stationary, and the Earth goes around the sun. That really took someone challenging the ideas of ethnocentrism and chronocentrism. Now, remember I had referred to just briefly um, uh, Dr. Cartwright. Well, Dr. Cartwright came up with an idea, a very a very chronocentric and ethnocentric idea. This was a new mental illness. Um, now, this addressed the problem of slavery. Now, we, we acknowledge today that slavery is an evil institution, and it is contrary to the laws of man and God. Any person, obviously, who was enslaved would naturally seek their freedom, and this is viewed today as a normal and rational decision. But what about at the time? What about in a different culture? Well, it's, this goes back to Mr. Cartwright. Uh, Cartwright came up with what he called a mental illness, drep, draptomania. Now, believe it or not, um, he saw that many slaves in America were running away. And he said, well, this is a mental illness. 
that if an enslaved African is trying to escape slavery, they must be mentally ill. In fact, he also went further and he said there's also a specific mental illness where African Americans are lazy. Um, of course, he didn't use the term African Americans. He used an antiquated and improper term, Negro. Um, and they suffered from uh, rascality, uh, which was, again, a kind of a made-up idea. So this is a, a good example of pseudoscience, but it's an extreme example of ethnocentrism and chronocentrism, the idea that what you think is right and then imposing that view on the rest of the world. Okay, so um, Cartwright suffered from this extreme example. He couldn't conceive of the idea that African Americans were people. He was locked in his definition of what was and was not people. And he couldn't accept the idea that they would want to be free. So he was raised inside a society that assumed, without any true basis for it, that African Americans were inferior and should in fact want to be slaves. Now this is clearly contrary to what we know to be true, but also what we be believe today. Now our, our belief today is based on better information, is based on a more factual basis. His was based on less. This is not to say that in a hundred years from now some idea um, will be common in a society and they will look back at us and say, wow, I can't believe 20th century America or 21st century America believe this. So we should think about uh, what examples exist today. What assumptions do we have in regards to language or culture or religion or thought that people will look back and say, well, we were being too ethnocentric. We were being too chronocentric. For example, what do we assume to be a crime? What do we assume to be a criminal? What causes crimes or makes someone a criminal? Those are kind of subcategories of those. Those are all interesting questions, I think, that we should keep in uh, our mind the idea of chrono and ethnocentrism as we begin to address them. All right, that's it.